Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our live stream of evening prayer from St. Michael and Only in Just Facebook page. Today is Wednesday, the 17th of May, and it is the eve of ascension, and we will be using the propers for such. Our worship begins on page 98 with the opening sentence for ascension. I'm sorry, that's the Holy Eucharist, my mistake. Page 61, the opening sentence for Ascension. Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. So welcome to those now joining in as we say the prayer of intention. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Canticle, Christ our Passover. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourself, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let's take a moment to bring before God all those things which we have done that were not pleasing to Him. So, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and save you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 68, verses 1 to 20, beginning on page 550. Psalm 68, verses 1 to 20. As we welcome those who have just joined us. <clears throat> let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, 
so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name, rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives a solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But rebels shall live in dry places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. We refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women who bore the tidings. Kings with their armies are fleeing away. The women at home are dividing the spoils. Though you lingered among the sheepfolds, you shall be like a dove whose wings are covered with silver, whose feathers are like green gold. When the Almighty scattered kings, it was like snow falling in Salmon. O mighty mountain, O hill of Bashan, O rugged mountain, O hill of Bashan, why do you look with envy, O rugged mountain, at the hill which God chose for his resting place? Truly the Lord will dwell there forever. The chariots of God are of twenty thousand, even thousands of thousands. The Lord comes in holiness from Sinai. You have gone up on high and led captivity captive. You have received gifts even from your enemies, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord day by day, the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens. He is our God, the God of our salvation. God is the Lord by whom we escape death. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was as now, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the Revelation to John, sorry, from Second Kings, chapter two, this is one to fifteen. Second Kings chapter two, this is one to fifteen. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, 
Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. When the company of prophets who were at Jericho saw him at a distance, they declared, The spirit of Elisha rests on Elisha. They came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we turn to page 67, as we say the Magnificat, page 67. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Saviour. For you have looked with favour on your newly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled in the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We turn to our second lesson in the Revelation to John, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 to 14. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne 
a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly, because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders, a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests, serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads, and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. The weed of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say the canticle on page 53, the Song of the Redeemed. Page 53, the Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, today we, or this evening, we commemorate the Eve of Ascension. Tomorrow is the Ascension Day, when we remember Jesus' Ascension into Heaven, into the Father, and His promise to send the Holy Spirit. 
and our first lesson from the second book of Kings kind of mirrors that event it is the Old Testament parallel if you like of an ascension and we see Elijah, Elijah and Elisha Elijah who knows that it's his time on earth is it's limited and it's coming to an end has made Elisha his successor sometime in the previous chapter or in the previous book Elisha was I think he was plowing the field and Elijah came and threw his mantle over him it was a symbol of making him his successor and so Elisha and Elijah have been working together and most likely Elijah has been mentoring and teaching Elisha about what was expected of him and we see that Elisha himself became a very powerful prophet but the thing is that he still had, he was still, you know, traumatized when Elijah left because after all, he regarded him as a father, a father-like figure. And when he asked for a double portion of his spirit, when Elijah um, asked what he could do for him, he asked, Elijah asked for a double portion of his spirit. And we know that in the, the law of Moses, it was the firstborn, the firstborn son, was entitled to a double portion of the inheritance from his father. So that Elisha was effectively proclaiming himself, or, you know, putting himself in, in, in place of, like, in a, in a place like Elijah's son. Which is why he asked for a double portion of the spirit. And Elijah did not promise it on of himself because he knew that he did not have the authority. But he said that if you see me while I am ascending, then it will be given to you. Even though he had all this power and um, authority and he could, you know, the spirit of God was upon him he still left the final decision up to God. And God, in his mercy, granted Elisha's request. And so, after he ascended, Elisha <coughs> kept looking up until he could see him no more. And the proof that he did receive a double portion of the Spirit was the fact that when he took Elijah's mantle and struck the water like Elijah did before, the same thing happened. The water parted and he was able to cross over in dry ground. And so it demonstrated to him and also to those who were present and who witnessed it that the Spirit of the Lord did indeed rest on Elijah. Elisha. And the the reading for the, the the day of ascension is the from the Acts of the Apostles where Luke is recounting what happened when Jesus ascended to the Spirit to the, to the Father. Sorry, he was talking with his disciples and he promised them that he would send the Spirit and that he would be with them always. And then he was taken up in a cloud. And the disciples stood there looking at him until I suppose until they could see him no more, the same way that Elijah looked at Elijah. And then the angel of God came to them and said, Why are you looking up? Why are you standing here looking up? The same Jesus whom you saw ascend will come back again. And this is a part that is, is, is important for us and relevant for us. Why are we standing here looking up? Why are we standing here or why are we sitting here 
why are we just simply looking up, waiting for God to return instead of doing what He has commanded us and charged us to do? There are many Christians who are just who are simply waiting for the return of Christ and doing very little as regards preaching the gospel, um, maybe testifying or um, praying and working to build up the body and to make disciples of others. They are simply looking up and praying for the return and lamenting the situation on earth and you know thinking how much longer when will Christ return and so on so this is so the angel has to ask why are we standing here why are we just simply looking up what we are supposed to be doing is getting busy doing what God what Jesus commanded his disciples and by extension us to do when he gave the great commission Jesus never said that we should just do nothing sit and pray and, and wait, wait, wait for his return yes we are to look for his return we are to look forward to his return and we are even to pray for his return but in the meantime we do not do nothing in the meantime we do not stand there looking up um doing nothing we have work to do we have lots of work to do we have been given tasks to do in fact we have been given the holy spirit which is the enabler uh, we don't have to wait we didn't have to wait with like the disciples it didn't you know they didn't have to be together in a room praying and waiting until the Holy Spirit came. We have we already have the Holy Spirit. We have received the Holy Spirit at our baptism. It was strengthened and reinforced at our confirmation. Those of us who were confirmed and were baptized. So we have the Holy Spirit and it is time for us to get busy and to get working and the more we work and the more sincerely we work and the more earnestly and intentionally we work the sooner Christ will come so if you think that if you find it's taking too long or you're wondering how long how much longer let us work harder because Jesus wants to come to return to meet a certain kind of church a certain kind of certain level of faith he asks will i find faith when i return and so if we are just doing nothing and, and helping others to to come to know him want to, to and to understand and to, to know the gospel then we, we too might be guilty of keeping him back so, let us get busy and let's get working because we have things to do and god you know god does not want any one of us to be lost or does not want to lose anyone and so the more people that we can help get into the kingdom the better even if you know before jesus comes let us see how many people we can help Get into the kingdom let us see how many people we can help get to know him get to love him get to to know the gospel yes so let us not stop standing staring at the heavens let us do what we have been commissioned to do and god jesus will return in his own time and he will return when the time is right so let us get busy. The Lord be with you. So we turn to page 69 as we say the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Now your church with faithfulness, and your servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. And so we turn to page 170 or 71, and we will see one of the collects for ascension. Let us say the third collect on page 171, the third collect for the ascension. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the church in the unity of his spirit and in the bond of his peace, and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Night nor darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So in a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your personal petitions to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue in prayer. We pray for the world. We pray for peace. We pray for an end to war, the conflict. We pray for an end to refugees. We pray for an end to homelessness. We pray for an end to hunger. We pray, Lord, for those who are in power, that they will seek the interests and the benefits and the welfare of those under them. We pray for our leaders. We ask that you 
change their hearts, make change their hearts of stone to hearts of flesh, that they will seek the interests of their citizens and do what is necessary to relieve their suffering, whether economic, physical, or emotional. We pray that they will put measures in place so that all citizens will have access to health care, to homes and housing and shelter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those places where there, those are, people are suffering from the effects of natural disaster. We pray for those affected by flooding, earthquakes, and other forms of natural disaster. We ask your protection, O oh God, as we approach our rainy season. We ask for protection for those who live in flood prone areas, and they will be spared damage and loss of property when the rains come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord, in the same vein, we pray that we will be good stewards of your creation. Today is the third and last foundation day. And we pray, God, that we will take better care of your, of your, of your earth, we will be better stewards of this place that you have given us management over. We pray that as Christians, O oh God, we will be more vigilant, we will be more passionate about how we treat this land of ours, this, this place of ours, this planet of ours. We pray that we will not leave it up to others that you will understand that we too are responsible and not just governments or environmental organizations that we as Christians that those who love you are the first stewards of your creation we were given the command Lord in your mercy hear our prayer We pray for our church, our leaders. We pray that we will be guided by your Holy Spirit, that we will submit ourselves to your Holy Spirit of God and be obedient to your will. We thank you for the recently concluded synod, and we pray that it will not end with just discussion that, that that plans, progress, proposals, recommendations will be implemented and changes will be adopted and made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country for an end to crime, violence, and all the social ills that make us weary, worry, and unsafe. We pray for an end to violence. We pray for an end to the murders. We pray for an end to the importation of illegal guns and drugs. We pray, Lord, for an end to those systems that perpetrate economic instability. We pray for those who are living in poverty, those who are homeless, those who are voiceless. Lord, we lift them up to you. We pray for relief. We pray for an intervention. We pray that you will use us as instruments of your peace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to corruption. We pray for accountability and transparency from our leaders and those in power and authority. We pray for strength and the political will to make 
harsh, unpopular decision, but decisions that will benefit the country as a whole. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. We pray for those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, those who are about to undergo medical and surgical procedures. We pray for those who have had tests and are not so positive results. We pray that you will strengthen them, that you will increase their faith in you, that you will calm their nerves and help them to draw closer to you. We pray that you will give them the support of harmony and loved ones and strengthen them in their weakness and in their confusion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those contemplating suicide, those who are depressed. We pray that you will send them comfort, either by your spirit or by someone who will speak to them, befriend them, listen to them, and help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those living in abusive situations. We pray for those who are most vulnerable, those who have no one to protect them or to speak up for them. We pray for their protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the souls of those who have died. We pray that you will draw them more and more to your everlasting presence. We pray for those they have left behind, that you will comfort them, help them to find closure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for those celebrating birthdays and other special anniversaries at this time. We lift them up to you for your blessing. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We lift up those writing exams. We pray for calm. We pray for recollection. And we pray for acceptance, acceptance of the results. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank God with Stephanie for successful surgery and we pray for her continued healing, O oh God. So we lift up Stephanie to you. We thank you for all who attended to her, all who performed the surgery on her, all who took care of her and supported her. We continue to pray for her healing and that you will bring her to fullness of health. Lord Jesus, in your mercy and in your name we pray. Amen. And so, Lord, we lift up these prayers to you. We pray that you will grant our petitions as may be most expedient for us. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we end our worship, let us sing the Ascension Hymn, Hymn number 198, Thou art gone up and high, CPWI 198, and then we will sing it to the tune of Crown Him with Many Crowns, which is another Ascension Hymn. CBWI 198 to the tune of Crown Him with Many Crowns. Thou art gone up on high to mansions in the skies, and well thy falling unceasing make the sound of faith arise. But we are lingering here with sin and care oppressed. Lord, send thy promise come 
comforter and lead us to thy rest. When thou art gone up on high, but thou didst first come down, the world's most bitter misery to pass on to thy crown, and bid with griefs and cares, and upon what cause must be, but only let this path of tears lead us at last to thee. And thou art gone up and high, but thou shalt come again. Would all the bright ones of the sky attend and hail thy train? Lord, by thy saving power, so make us live and die, that we may stand in that dread of at thy right hand on high. Amen. So we see the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your own word. May be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more all than all that we can ask or conceive, by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you, my sisters and brothers, for joining us at evening prayer at St. Michael and all angels. You have a peaceful, restful night. I hope you were able to tune in to the Synod opening service last Wednesday. And I hope you had a grateful um, experience. We thank God for another completed synod and we pray for the work that still has to be done and, you know, pray for our, the, the, the end, the result of our, the recommendations of our discussions that they will come to fruition and that we will see the changes that are, that are necessary for our diocese and for our country. So have a peaceful rest of the night. Continue to be safe. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And we will see you the next time. God willing. Okay? Have a good night.